Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy videos like this, as well as species-specific care and husbandry videos, then be sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell right next to it and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any videos I upload in the future. Today I'm going to take you with me to Tinley Park in ARBC. If you don't know what that is, it's the North American Reptile Breeders Conference in Tinley Park, Illinois just south of Chicago. It's the largest of its type in North America, and this year it was the largest it's ever been. But I had to warm up before going to an expo that large. So a couple weeks before Tinley, I grabbed my wife and son and mother who was in town, and we went out to Pittsburgh for a reptile expo there. We wanted to kind of warm up to Tinley, as well as pick up a few things that we needed right away. But not only that, one of the moderators from the Facebook group, Kylie, was there with our husband Steve, and they were hanging out with a member of the Tarantula Collective Facebook group, Sean from Addictive Arachnids, and I really wanted to check out his booth since he wouldn't be at Tinley. We do a couple different shows throughout Pennsylvania. Um, we do Ohio, we do some in Maryland, but generally Pennsylvania. Everything that I sell, I've produced, or any of my local friends have produced. My collection alone is probably close to 600. I prefer to work with local breeders or friends that are in the hobby that have been doing this for a while. We do shows, we don't always make out the best at these shows, but I sell more stuff online, but it's the fact of getting out, meeting people such as yourself, or just talking, educating other people learning from their experiences because I document everything on my own. I do all my husbandry documents, all breeding, everything in my record. So I can always go to a rack board and look at you know when someone else's female dropped the sack after being paired or how they keep this or how they keep that but I have all that records of my own. Tarantulas, I do isopods, I do roaches. You sell people. online as well? Yeah, I do. I don't have a website. I had my website taken down. Facebook wasn't at that time linked with PETA and you could sell your stuff on Facebook. But as of right now, generally people just message me, check out my page. So that was fun, we had a great time, we got ourselves into the mindset of big convention, and then it was time to head to Chicago. Today is a very special day, I'm getting ready to hit the road with my wife, we're heading out to Tinley, Illinois for the NARBC. Hopefully I'll be seeing some of you all there, but that's not the only reason today is exciting. Yesterday, on October 10th, this channel crossed 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Now that kind of blows my mind when I think back to my first upload actually being on October 28th of last year. And that really seemed like something that was just completely not possible, not something that would ever happen. It's been awesome that you guys have been following me on this trip, and today, you're gonna follow me on a different type of trip. So let's go to Tinley. Sleep, no rest, might crash, might wreck, but first I stretch, and I'm running it off. I wake up, flex, thumb down that check, no drip, this whack. So here we are, we are at Tinley, getting ready to go inside and see Tanya and Fear Not Tarantulas and a couple of the mods from the Facebook group, pretty excited. Came up out the womb of man, with everything that you demand. You could say I had a plan, way before I had a fan. Some would probably call it luck, I just call it being blessed You ain't never did the work, but you wanna be the best Lately I can never stress, never better, better yet Might have had a thing for you, she know I'm the better bet I digress, I let it rest, go and get another check I could always see my future, 
I bet they could never guess Guess and they get it cause look at me now and then look at yourself in the mirror I know they doubted my thesis but they doubted Jesus and right now I'm making it clear Clearly these people don't know where they going and lately I feel like the man with the map I got this out the mud you could give me the word and I'll probably give it right back Back of the bus I was scraping the change, back in my head I was living a life Back of my job I was losing the focus and trying to find ways to get back to the mic All of this working ain't working I felt like a liar and I cannot lie to my soul I know the truth universal so don't let me tell you I know that a lot of you know This is a Jackson Chameleon. Where are they from? Kenya. Kenya? Yeah. All right. They're from Kenya. Are they pretty difficult to keep? Uh, they're actually not that bad to keep. Yeah. Uh, they're the good part about it is that they they endure the cold versus the heat. Yeah. So a lot of these guys really need the heat to survive. But these guys are okay with the cold. So like if you're missing them in the cold and whatnot, you just go. Babies, they are hard to, you know, start up yeah. for food, purpose, and feeding him and all that good stuff. But as they get older, they eat by themselves. And they're good to go, man. They're pretty hardy. So he said these lived about five to fifteen years, or five to ten years. Keeping his eye on me. Enjoy the content. Um, we picked up a uh, Mexican fire leg yesterday from oh, we're, Fear Not, we're so uh, nice. yeah, just something a little bit different. And so what kind of stuff do you all breed and sell? Um, we breed uh, Papua and carpet python specifically. Um, we work with llamas and blackheads, and uh, we just don't have any of those for sale right now. And some ball pythons as well. And some friends of ours have uh, some geckos, and uh, yeah, having a good time. Where are you all from? Um, right around Champagne. So oh, you're like local then, huh? So, yeah. yeah. This drive up here is a piece of Cake, so. Nice. Very cool. How long have you been doing this? Oh wow, uh, about 20 years or so. Oh, wow. Yeah, kind of a hobby that's just expanded upon itself, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, my name is Brian Burnett. I own Special G Morphs. I do tarantulas, centipedes, scorpions, roaches, isopods, and various snakes, lizards. A couple other things. Where are you from? We're out of Carlisle, Kentucky. Oh yeah? Yeah. Uh, not too far from us. No. Just over in West Virginia. Are you? Yeah. Um, I think our first breeding was uh, Pusilotheria regalis, and we're working on Metallica right now. Um, a couple of like GBB and uh, uh, some Cobalts, King Baboons, a couple other things. So what other, what other kind of stuff do you breed and sell? Uh, so I started the hobby as a snake breeder, so yeah. I mainly deal with Colombian boas, uh, Brazilian rainbow boas, ball pythons, and various colubrids, and I think we are starting on uh, retics now. So oh, really? Got a bunch of retics coming <laughs> in. Very good. Yeah. So how long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been breeding snakes for a little over 18 years now. All right. Okay, so my name's Hannah, uh, that's Tyler over there. We run Isopod Source. This is our first time vending here at Tinley. Okay. Uh, we're from Massachusetts actually, and we breed all of these isopods that we have here at home. Uh, we started about two years ago when we realized we could clean all of our reptile cages with isopods, and it's been working since then, and we've been expanding to getting other species for pets as well as clean up crews, and it's just been a blast since then. <laughs> the last two years have been Great for ice spots. <laughs> nice. What, uh, what? We got some assassin bugs from we you do. yesterday. Yes, we have assassin bugs today as well as emperor scorpions and pill millipedes, which are some of the other things that we've been learning to breed. The, the we have we had four species. We had a horrid king's assassin bugs. We had red spots, white spots, and mambos. And we pretty much sold out of all of them. Nice. <laughs> These can live roughly um, around one to two years, but they're very prolific, so they can breed fast in uh, captivity, and you can keep them communally. Um, pods also live two to three years in yeah, captivity, roughly. actually. All the ones in the pet trade live pretty long. So these are isopods from the Armagalidium genus. So here's a mixture of different porcelio species. You'll notice the biggest difference is that these guys don't roll up, like the Armagalidium do. So that's where the name comes from, like armadillos, the ones that roll up, and the Porcelio do not. <laughs> more on the, the more expensive side. They're 
pretty rare in the trade. They breed slower, they grow slower, but they are so much prettier and more fun to look at. <laughs> For species, like um, recently in like the past year or so, yeah. these are called the uh, Kubaris yellow dust. They're pretty much like see-through. Look at them. With, like a cool speckling. And hey, where do they come from? These come actually from Malaysia. A lot of the um, Kubaris genus comes from Thailand, Malaysia, um, Southeast Asia. They have some that are you can find in the United States, like Kubaris marina. Pretty common down in Florida. These right here are Rocolomeris pill millipedes. There are two colors in there. We have black bloods, which have the solid Back, and some of the others are strawberries that have the two black dots on the dorsal side. They are from uh, Thailand. They get about an inch in length. Some of them get up to two inches. They are pretty new to the hobby, but we have actually been breeding them successfully. They grow extremely slow. They take, the babies take about a year to reach pinky nail size. <laughs> and they basically have a diet that solely consists of live moss and decaying wood, which is part of the reason they're so hard to keep alive getting having access to fresh moss and being able to ferment your own wood yeah. <laughs> but that's how we've been doing it and we've been pretty successful they actually a fun fact is they drop their babies as they poop so they're not like other millipedes that will have all their babies in one area so you start to see them pop out as long as you keep the soil damp and it's the most fun thing <laughs> it's like sprouting grass everywhere different sizes different colors <laughs> very cool what kind of things do you all rescue yeah um, reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates. So yeah, we do get some tarantulas sometimes. Even. So yeah, the tarantula, scorpions. Kind of got like a couple of vinegarums too. Um, so we do get like some of those, but a lot of aquatic turtles as well. Because a lot of times people get them when they're small and they're cute, and you know, and then they just explode in size and they become more smelly as they explode. Right. But we also get you know big girls like her, um, guys like him that you wouldn't expect to see in a reptile rescue because it's a pretty valuable and rare yeah monomatas you don't see too often so what do you do with them when you rescue them so we do have volunteer vet staff that comes in we have a, a vet and vet tech someone's there like a vet comes in every week vet techs are there regularly so we just check and make sure everyone's healthy before we do put them up for adoption do have some exceptions if they're really old or they have a lot of health problems they usually stay sometimes sometimes owners that have to surrender their animals might actually choose to sponsor them so they actually want their animals to stay with us and so we can use them as like for education and kind of like representatives like some of these guys he was somebody's pet and um he wanted the star tortoise to come to us when he passed away so it was he took such good care of him um he is a captive born and raised so not taken from the wild if people are interested in uh, adopting like how do they how do they get involved in that so we do have we have like an email a facebook page that has like you know you if you contact them we can send you an adoption application it's something you fill out like with your information you know we have to make sure that everybody gets the name of an exotic vet nearby that they can take their animals to we actually adopted out 500 animals last year like oh, wow. between reptiles amphibians and invertebrates and we're on track to do similar this year yeah. and we've taken in about 700 each of the last two consecutive yeah. years so a lot of animals go through us it's really busy it's, and for an all-volunteer like based organization we stay really busy. that's why we like to come here and you know kind of spread the word on how big some of these animals can get we love reptiles all like you know it's they make great pets they're great to have around we just always want to make sure people know what they're going to do with them we want to make sure that everybody gets well taken care of the first day is in the bag. It is done and over with. We went and had some awesome dinner with Tanya and the crew with Fear Non Tarantulas and got to spend some time just kind of hanging out, talking, and getting to know these people better. And that's one of the best parts on this trip to Tinley and this trip to 10K is getting to meet some of you cool people out there, like some of the moderators of the Facebook group that really kind of help keep that a good, supportive, informative, and educational place. People like Tanya Higgins and Debbie Nash and Kylie Banson and some of you guys that subscribe to these channels like i got to meet a guy today named brian hunt who it happens to be his birthday today so happy birthday brian as well as a whole lot of other people ride with me if you ride with me you can slide with me if you feel like 
550 on the five sticky, come get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five sticky, come get high with me, that's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Ayy, coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation. Hate applying my elimination. Gotta go to Google for the information. I'm a superstar, so I gotta shine. Top dollar be the bottom line. Bottom feeding dotted line. Turn your heart rate to a dotted line. Yeah, my zodiac probably dollar sign. Got the energy to win in my neck. I'm feeling great. Got a date with destiny, focusing on my fate. I don't give a fuck what you rapping, you been a fake. I'm everything that they ain't. It can't be, it won't be. Wanna see me fall? I can't go, I won't leave. Coming from the block with plain clothes and police. Straight up to the top. With bank rolls and rollies. Ride with me if you ride with me. You can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five sticky. Come get high with me. That's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me. You can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five sticky. Come get high with me. That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? Ayy, 12 can't really stop. Just don't still push it like a mosh pit. Ice dripping, think I'm hot. CT3 works great for those arboreal species where you need to get a little bit of climbing space out of them. It's got a locked in uh, screen lid on the top. Easy access from there. We don't have to worry about opening a door, having somebody jump out that way. Much easier access. Comes with a few of the little accessories inside of there. We also then do the terrestrial size cage. Great for any of those terrestrial animals, scorpions, burrowing spiders, all that. Call that the CT6. It's the den style. Again, comes with a few of the accessories, but works really well if we've got a burrowing species or something that just needs a little bit bigger footprint. Sliding locking top on, the, on that one as well. To go with it, a bunch of different accessories, substrates, feed dishes, all of that. Makes the easiest cage that we can. All right, so I'm here at the NRABC in Tinley Park with one of the moderators from Facebook. This is Debbie. Hello. I'm Justin Romick. I'm here with Kylie now with uh, Tanya. She is one of the moderators in the Facebook group. I'm gonna ask her a few questions. First, uh, I was wondering, uh, what is your favorite tarantula? My favorite tarantula was actually the very first tarantula that I bought, and it is a Carabina Versicolor. It's a boy now, and his name is Bowie. My favorite individual tarantula is, uh, it's hard to pick one, it's a tie between the Pocolotheria subfusca and the Pocolotheria metallica. I like them all. I really had to think hard on this question. I'm gonna go by genus. I like the Zanessis genus and I like the Pokies. So why do you keep tarantulas? Uh, I keep tarantulas because I uh, I really just like spiders and tarantulas in general. They're really cool. They're easy to take care of uh, and they're really awesome to just watch them and uh, see them grow, see all their behaviors and everything. Uh, I think they're extremely underrated and there's a lot of people that don't really appreciate most of the things they do or so what got you into tarantulas like why do you keep tarantulas I have no idea because before I got that spider that tarantula I was the biggest arachnophobe ever like they would give me cold sweat nightmares but um, I have a really awesome job and I teach and am around lots of reptiles and invertebrates so I needed to get over that fear and a bright blue cute fluffy spider helped me become addicted to even more tarantulas. Why do you keep tarantulas? Um, I like that there's just so much diversity in them. They're kind of, I've always been into the creepy things that aren't your standard pet. I grew up around tarantulas, so it just kind of was like a natural step to have a bunch of tarantulas. I fell in love with tarantulas about seven years ago when I was studying invert species in paleontology. And as I learned more about their biology and their evolutionary path and how their organs work and how their muscles work, I was fascinated. And they've been unchanged, basically, evolutionarily for 300 million years. That's astonishing. It's like they got it right early on and then they were done. <laughs> Why do you think that tarantulas make a good pet? 
Um, I like the I like that you can get a lot of them, and it's like if you had 200 hamsters or 200 dogs, oh that would be God. very labor intensive. Yeah. I like that you can get a big diversity of them and still have like minimal, like they're so easy and so minimal on maintenance. They're at low maintenance, and for people that keep reptiles, a lot of people that keep inverts also keep reptiles. A lot of reptiles, like bearded dragons, um, they're high maintenance. Like you're you're giving them veggies, you're giving them bugs, you're cleaning up poop. <laughs> and they would make a mess of their cage. And But they're really rewarding pets, but I mean, it's nice to have something that you can observe and it's pretty self-sufficient. What is your favorite part of the tarantula hobby? I love talking to new tarantula keepers or people who are like apprehensive and they're a little nervous because the excitement and the passion that I have for them is Absolutely communicable. It's, it's you know it, it's contagious, and I love seeing the excitement when you talk about these things. <laughs> it's not something you learn about when you're a kid, and and to see people light up and really get into this community spirit and enjoy right, them, enjoy learning about them is really exciting for me. But a rim, I used to pull forward, dig to down my stomach all in a twist. I had to dish the cup, yeah. Now I got those water bottles in. I had some real dark days. Now these are looking real positive. Once I peel part ways, I ain't don't need no parts of friends. I, I, I guess that's how the game goes. Lifestyle getting real, real. Lifestyle is a handful. I'm a one, only one dog. That's a fact, that's a case closed. Do road, then I lay low. Wake up and do it every day. It's gorgeous. Nah, nah, nah. What's your name? Jonathan Novio. And what did you uh, what'd you grab today? So for today, I stopped by Fear Not and got a Vicularia Miniatrix Juvenile. Uh, it looks female, so I think that's a pretty good buy right there. All right, Scott, so you just had your first convention, right? Yeah, it's, uh, what'd you think? It's awesome. Uh, yeah? Glad to come back. Awesome. What was your favorite part? I'm just working at the stand and seeing all the new customers. Yeah? So how long have you been with Fear Not now? Almost a year. Yeah? Very cool. Enjoying it. Yes, I am. You like working with Tanya. Tanya's an awesome person. What's your favorite terrain? Oh, mine? Yeah. Goliath Bird Eater. Keep on it. Bird Eater? Yeah. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Come around like ra, 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 ra. Talking all that blah, 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 blah. I've been scoring. Cheap deals. Bore me. Blah, blah. You bore me. Caution. from the Tinley and ARBC. How'd it go? What'd you all think? Awesome. I have a little bit money. Who's broke? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> It was a really cool time. I got to meet a lot of subscribers, a lot of people to follow me on Instagram or members of the Facebook group. It was cool to shake your hands and get to put a face with the name. Met some awesome people. We were really wore out when it was all said and done. We picked up some very cool species while we were there. We got a ball python, we got a California king snake, as well as some scorpions and millipedes. And if you're interested to see anything that I picked up, just check out my Instagram. It's linked down below in the description. I've got photos of everybody that I picked up at 
Scott Tinley, and they'll be featured in future videos as well. Not only was this an exciting trip because I was going to Tinley, but while this was all going on, the channel crossed 10,000 subscribers. And if you watched the live stream last Tuesday, then you know that we were having a giveaway contest. A big thanks to Rhino Wallets for donating a couple of those wooden minimalist wallets for me to give away to you all. I'll have a link down below in the description to their website if you want to check some out and pick some up for yourself. And if you want to participate in more contests and giveaways, then be sure to join the Facebook group, the Tarantula Collective. We always have something going on in there, giving things away, whether they're stickers or shirts or all kinds of stuff. Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. It means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe and share these videos with your friends. And be sure to tune in next week for the Halloween special. I guarantee you're going to enjoy it. And if you want to stay up to date on everything going on with the Tarantula Collective, just visit my website, thetarantulacollective.com. There are links there to all the social media platforms I'm on, as well as a merchandise store if you want to pick up some Tarantula Collective gear. Well, as always, it's fun hanging out with you. I hope you enjoyed this trip to the NRABC. If I didn't get to see you this time, hopefully I'll see you next time in March. But if not, I will see you next Tuesday.